Hi folks, the following video is going to talk about reactions of carbenes. Two types of reactions are alkene additions and CH bond insertions. As a reminder, carbenes are neutral molecules featuring a carbon with two bonds and a lone pair. The carbon of the carbene has six valence electrons, so it has an incomplete octet. One possibility for a bent carbene is that it is classified as a triplet carbene. A bent triplet carbene will have a sp2 hybridized carbon with one unpaired electron in an sp2 orbital in the plane of the molecule and one unpaired electron with the same spin in a half-filled p orbital. A singlet carbene will have a different placement of electrons. For the singlet carbene, the electrons will be paired in an sp2 hybrid orbital in the plane of the molecule. And there will be an empty p orbital with lobes above and below the plane of the molecule. One way to generate a carbene is to heat a diazoalkane. Diazoalkanes will feature a carbon attached to two nitrogens. There are two resonance forms for diazoalkanes. In one of them, the carbon has a pi bond to a central nitrogen, and the end nitrogen is anionic. To get to the other resonance structure, you could bring down a lone pair from this anionic nitrogen to form a nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, and take the electrons from the nitrogen-carbon pi bond and bring them to carbon. In the other resonance form, the central nitrogen will remain cationic, but now it is a carbanion type of resonance form. I think this resonance form is easier to see the carbene formation from. To generate the carbene, you would break the carbon-nitrogen bond and bring the electrons to nitrogen. The carbon would retain its lone pair and now have an incomplete octet and be present as a carbene. This reaction is very entropically favorable because it generates nitrogen gas. A related strategy for generating carbenes is decomposition of diazerines. These feature a carbon-nitrogen-nitrogen three-membered ring where there is a pi bond between the nitrogens. Diazerines can be decomposed by either light or heat. The decomposition results in generation of dinitrogen with a nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond again. This is a gas. And they also generate the carbene. A final way to generate a dichloro-substituted carbene is to treat chloroform, CHCl3, with a base. Tert-butoxide is a commonly used base, and the first step of the carbene formation will be a proton transfer. The tert-butoxide will act as a base to deprotonate the chloroform's CH bond. This is fairly acidic due to the electron withdrawing chlorine substituents. This proton transfer step is reversible and it generates the conjugate base of chloroform, a trichloro-substituted carbanion. To generate a dichlorocarbene, there can be a loss of one of these chlorines as a leaving group. This slow loss of leaving group step forms the dichlorocarbene and a chloride anion. So the first two methods are more general, and the third method is just for generating dichlorocarbene. Carbenes can add to alkenes to generate cyclopropyl three-membered ring products. The mechanisms for singlet versus triplet carbenes will differ. In the case of a singlet carbene, the reaction will be concerted. You would take the pi bond as a nucleophile to attack the carbene carbon, and take the carbene lone pair and bring it to one of the carbons of the alkene. In the single step, both of the carbons of the alkene form a new bond to the carbene carbon, 
generating the three-membered ring. In the case of the triplet carbene, where you have two unpaired electrons instead of a lone pair, a radical mechanism will occur instead. In the first step, a new carbon-carbon bond is generated by using one electron from the pi bond and one electron from the carbene. The other electron from the pi bond goes to one of the carbons of the alkene to generate a radical. In this step, a new carbon-carbon bond is formed. The carbene carbon now has a single unpaired electron, and one of the carbons of the alkene has an unpaired electron as well. You could call this a bi-radical intermediate. Because the two radicals of this intermediate are in the same compound, you can have an intramolecular reaction to form a new carbon-carbon bond, essentially bringing those two radicals together to form the new carbon-carbon bond of the three-membered ring. Another type of carbene reactions are CH bond insertion reactions, where the carbon of the carbene will have a new bond to a carbon and a new bond to a hydrogen. We'll first look at reactions for singlet carbenes. For singlet carbenes, there is a lone pair present on the carbene, and this is going to form the new bond to the hydrogen of the CH bond. In a concerted mechanism, I would bring the carbene lone pair to the proton, take the electrons from that CH bond, and bring them to the carbene center. After the CH bond insertion, the carbon that was formerly the carbene has a new bond to a hydrogen and a bond to the carbon that the hydrogen was previously attached to. Singlet carbenes can also undergo intramolecular CH bond insertion reactions. One particular example of this involves a CH bond on a neighboring carbon. Here is an example carbene molecule, and I've explicitly drawn out a carbon-hydrogen bond adjacent to the carbene. In this curved arrow mechanism, I would take the lone pair from the carbene to the proton, and in the case where you have a neighboring CH bond, you would take the electrons from the CH bond and bring them down to form a pi bond. The first curved arrow shows the formation of the new carbon-hydrogen bond to the carbon that was previously the carbene, and the second curved arrow shows the pi bond formation between the carbene and the neighboring carbon that lost its hydrogen. This type of CH bond insertion can also occur for singlet carbenes using more distant carbon-hydrogen bonds. So here is another carbene and instead of looking at a neighboring carbon-hydrogen bond, I'm looking at a carbon-hydrogen bond one further position away. The first curved arrow of this concerted mechanism would be similar, using the carbene lone pair to deprotonate the proton of the CH bond. And then instead of forming a pi bond, I would take those electrons from the CH bond and bring them to the carbene center itself similar to what we saw in the intermolecular case up above. In the product, the carbon that was previously the carbene has a new hydrogen attached to it, and it has a new carbon-carbon bond to the carbon that lost the proton. In this particular case, because the CH bond was at position 3 relative to the carbene center, a three-membered ring would be formed. CH bond insertions can also occur for triplet carbenes, the di-radical form of the carbene, and most commonly this will occur in an intermolecular fashion. So imagine a carbene and a molecule approaching it with a CH bond. Instead of a concerted reaction, we're going to have a stepwise reaction involving radical intermediates. I would take one electron from the triplet carbene and bring it together with one electron from the CH bond, and the other electron from the CH bond would go to the carbon. The two fishhook arrows that meet in the middle 
from the carbene to the hydrogen generate a new carbon-hydrogen bond. One of the electrons of the carbene is left behind as a radical, and when the CH bond broke, it generated a radical on that carbon. To generate a new carbon-carbon bond, I'll bring those two carbon radicals together to generate a carbon-carbon sigma bond. Ultimately, the same product that we saw in the case of the singlet carbene is observed, where the carbene carbon has a new bond to hydrogen and a new bond to carbon. The only difference is that this proceeded by radical intermediates instead of a concerted mechanism. So from this video, I hope you have a reminder of the singlet versus triplet carbenes. And then I introduced two different types of reactions. Carbene reactions with pi bonds and carbene reactions with CH bonds. The mechanisms differ for both of these types of reactions between singlet carbenes versus triplet carbenes. In class, we're going to go into more nuance for some of these reactions and think about aspects such as stereochemistry and orbitals. That's it for this video. I will see you in class.